This is Sport Night Amplified with Anguilla, powered by SABC Sport. Exclusive to Metro FM. Game over. Taking some games lightly. Uh, started slow. Considered early in the game. You know, because of sloppy defending. We paid the price. Then we got a wake-up call. We looked like, you know, we can take the game to them. Controlled the tempo of the game. Then we got a goal from a set place. Uh, but still, we were not moving enough, you know, and we were not... Uh, then we considered from a dead ball situation, again, actually, we were lucky not to concede, uh, you know, twice from, from those, you know, set plays, you know, so, yeah, if you, you concede, you know, from standard situations like that, and when you get the opportunity, how many did we get? We couldn't, you know, uh, find the target, and then second half, it was only one team play. Uh, but we paid the price of uh, taking this game lightly or taking it for granted, you know, from first half. And now we ended up chasing the game. Brandon Tritter says there's a drinking culture at Amazulu. Ayanda Zlamini says, uh, hey, maybe he knows about the drinking culture then. What mm. are the exact words? Maybe bestagwanaye. There you go. Maybe bestagwanaye. One coach says there's a drinking culture at that team that I was at. The other coach responds and says, maybe bestagwanaye. Yo, mm. Cape Town City. They're like, hey, listen, Mayo, you're one of the top goal scorers this season. You're one of those young players to look out for. He's only 24 years old. You're not going anywhere. You're staying put here. We're extending your contract. What you've just heard now, though, that was Atha Zwane. And I feel like I've heard that sort of talk before after a match. Because the Chiefs have just lost, of course, uh, to Swallows. Two goals to one. For those who are worried about Keegan Allen, where a, a nasty incident happened on the pitch there. He is fine. Um... We've had uh, the chairman of Swallows tweeting that he is okay. But that incident, should there have been a red card there? For Keegan Allen to get hurt in the way that he did, should there have been a red card? Riff? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't want you to tell me now, but surely there should have been <laughs> some sort of punishment there. Yeah, yeah uh, FIFA has issued an instruction that uh, any hand on the face is called striking an opponent on the face. All right, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. That's my team. You know, on a Monday, it's the three not-so-wise men. I've got the referee, <laughs> Victor Shongwane. Uh, we call him the principal. I've got uh, Mazola Mulefer as well. If you missed it, we just played you the reaction from Arthur Zwane after Kaza Chiefs have gone down 2-1 to Swallows Football Club. My calculations, Swallows Football Club have survived this season. Kaiser Chiefs will struggle if they can even still make the top three. Because all that needs to happen now is uh, Pirates need to win one game of day three. Uh, Super Sport need to win one game of day three. With Chiefs having two games to go, it's going to be virtually difficult for them to catch up to those two. So we can say that Chiefs are out. But that's not the conversation I want to have, Mazola. Mm-hmm. I think, and I said it just now to Tibo Touch, Orlando Pirates, whose supporters called us here complaining. Yeah, They were complaining. You were here. Yeah, They were complaining. I think Orlando Pirates have been the most successful team in the DSTV Premiership this season. Um, Coach Jose Riviero is breaking records. Uh, you know, six in a row. Six in a row. The last time that happened, the likes of Root Kroll were still in charge. Um, he's da- he's done well. He's won a trophy. He's won a trophy. He's, he's in the semi final. He's, the semis. he's, he's could, guaranteed top three. Exactly. Which means he's going to Kef he's next year. He's going to Kef next year. So Sundowns have won the league. What else have they done in the in the in the in the, pre- in the DSTV Premiership? Nothing else. Orlando Pirates argue with us give us a call let's have those conversations i've got the three not so wise men because sometimes hey we get it wrong but that's why you're here because we have conversations here hey, one of us is famous for saying you know get offside nyana <laughs> you know the other one said uh, give them uh, the league but he also said give them the net bank 
you know. Hey, so don't then we, remind we, sometimes me. we get it wrong. <laughs> I say a lot of things <laughs> that are wrong. Trust me, we don't always get it right. But we're happy to be your company over the next uh, 15 minutes that remains now from 6 or 7 o'clock. A lot of you driving home. And I know there's a lot of traffic, particularly coming from Limpopo, Polokwane. Take it easy on the roads. Take it easy on the roads. We'll mm, make sure that, mm. you know, we'll keep you company over the next hour. Those as well driving from KZN, we're with you. You know the numbers to call by now. 2023 is the year that keeps on flexing with the Caltex Big Flex promotion. Stand a chance to win one of 10 Fuel for a Year vouchers by filling up with 400 rand or more at any Caltex 4 court. Win your share of Fuel for a Year and hit the road anytime you want. Thrive while you drive with Caltex Big Flex. Promotion runs until 17 May. T's and C's apply. Caltex, it's how you get there. Now, Balabantu Groove presents the official Metro FM Music Awards pre-party. Friday, 5 May, at the Prestige Lifestyle Grand in Bombella. Catch some easy, Tivo Dutch, Lulo Cafes, Java, DJ Maporisa, BDM, Fallen, Sergio Taylor, Lady P, and many more. Join in on the celebrations from 10 till 8. Tickets at Comedy Ticket from 200 bucks. Table packages available from Prestige Lifestyle Grand. Metro FM, Black is back. Attention all caregivers of children. Are you and your children's vaccinations up to date? Vaccinations can prevent serious diseases and prevent hospital stays. Protect your little ones by getting them vaccinated. Don't wait until it's too late. Talk to your healthcare provider today about getting your child vaccinated against serious childhood diseases. Because health matters. This message is brought to you by Sanofi and the National Department of Health. Share all the sporting thrills with Betway. Visit betway.co.za. Bet your way with Betway. Bet on your favorite teams and leagues online, anytime and anywhere, with Betway. Visit betway.co.za. Hashtag the weekend that was. On Sports Not Amplified with Andila Metro FM. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sports. It is uh, SNW um, A. If you can find us on Twitter, it's SN. Um, then it's with Andila. So it's Sports Night Amplified. S- SNA underscore with Andila. So you can have communication with us. You can give us a call on 86 0002160. WhatsApp on 0605527303. It's the weekend that was. So it's not the only thing that we're touching local football. We're going to be going to the Premier League as well. Manchester City finally taking their rightful place in the Premier League. Um, uh, Man United doing well to get within the top three there. Arsenal, they did what many of us were expecting Arsenal to do there. So we can have a, co- a conversation about that. But also, Brad Bender doing so well in the MotoGP, the South African, coming second. So close was that last lap. That last lap where he got lapped and uh, he came second there. F1 as well, the Baku race. We can talk about that when we come back. Co- coach's reaction as well. Coach Rana Mukwene said something I've never heard a coach say. Because there aren't a lot of coaches who didn't play football. We've had a lot of conversations here, particularly after what uh, Sia Dremovich said, that uh, there are people who didn't play football who weren't the best but have the gall to talk about it. Rolando Mugwena has come out and said, I didn't play football and this is a disadvantage. Mm. I'll play you that clip. But firstly, let's start the show in the right way with our friends at Betway. What's wrong? All right, uh, we played already. Oh, there we go. Hey, but everything is slow here. Malcolm is speaking with his hands. I'm thinking, what are you doing? It's 15 after the hour six. Let's go straight into it. Here is a little bit from the Motorsport GP. Here we go then now. There's going to be one corner left. It's all or nothing now for Brad Binder. He snakes the KTM sideways. Bagnaia though, brilliant on the brakes. Paco Bagnaia surely will have it coming out on the final corner. Paco Bagnaia, he wins the Spanish Grand Prix here in a red. Brilliant performance by the world champion. It's a sprint podium for him and the main Grand Prix win. Brad Binder. What a final lap that was. Binder, a 138-211 on the last lap, was his fastest lap of the Grand Prix. That's uh, the South African Brett Binder coming in second there at the Motorsport GP. An amazing final lap. Let's go to the F1 now. It was out in Baku and Malcolm can't wait to play it. Play it, Malcolm. 
And Formula One is underway on the streets of Baku. It has been a phenomenal performance from Sergio Perez. The street fight has done it again. Sergio Perez wins in Azerbaijan to take his sixth career victory to beat his teammate for the first time this season. Ferrari on the podium with Charles Leclerc takes the chequered flag and he comes across the line and he's got it. King of the streets. Well done, guys. Uh, we're coming into this weekend. Ah, uh, well done, guys. Well done. Oh man, uh, amazing that if you're watching that race, they're always exhilarating. But I think uh, the days of us wishing that Hamilton is actually going to get a podium and win um, a season, I think it's over. Um, It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, the decisions that Mercedes is making. Let's get now into football, starting with the Premier League. Well, here's Salah and Alexander-Arnold. And round the back is, oh, it's a wonderful finish. Curtis Jones has really rubber-stamped his name. It's a goal made in Liverpool, scored by Liverpool. That's a ball by Salah for Gakpo. And Luis, oh, yes, what a goal! What a finish that is! Luis Diaz is back with a bang. Perisic, oh, that's brilliant. He sat Van Dijk down and Kane does score. And they nearly scored a moment ago. Now they do score through Harry Kane. Oh, that's Romero. Oh, the ball to Son is absolutely delightful. And it's game on at Anfield. And it's Richarlison who's got round the back and scored. What a comeback by Tottenham. Well, that's back towards Diogo Jota, who's inside the penalty area and scores. Absolutely incredible. Tottenham come from three down to 3-3 in stoppage time. Only for Diogo Jota to come from nowhere and score for Liverpool and make it 4-3. I must be very honest. I thought that uh, the 3-3... Um, Arsenal game was the most exciting game this season and then this game now 4-3 right at the dying end Liverpool gee was I don't do even see, know do you see Spurs fans leave after 15 minutes thinking it was all it. over it yeah. was all over and then they probably missed arguably one of the greatest, greatest finishes, finishes of, of, of a game in the Premier League this season oh they really did amazing that uh, and of course City taking uh, their place atop the, DS- uh, the, the, the Premier League now speaking of the DSU Premiership let's go straight into it some of the goals from the weekend One cheers galaxy, one Orlando Pirates. And the boy on a corner, on a corner of Natari. On a Pirate, and for man, I will ask me in the on her top. Amy Rupin Pong, who shall run again, shock of point blank range to Orlando Pirates. One cheers galaxy. And the boy on the corner, two like a tower, two like a tower happy, go to wait. I'm going to ya. Yeah, we are men and Bobella. I'm going to Papa Sella. If you like some Malamon Solomusu, the hottest one in the land, Dion Hotto. What come on a Paras Capelli? Those are the goals from the weekend from the talented voices of the SABC. Hey, VAR is in South Africa. Yeah. Is it going to stay? I don't know. Vic, you, it's in your hands. Yeah, I was the VAR license officer for Kemia Sundowns and Marumo Galant. Which is uh, why I want you to tell me what happened there with that Shaludi the call. <laughs> I, I, I need to hear it. Yeah, yeah, VAR was there. So. I mean, rather for the, the, the penalty call, yeah. uh, which I thought should have been a penalty, but you'll tell us. So VAR is here. VAR is here. All the equipment we from Portugal are stored at Safa House. I stored it myself today. <laughs> so you you got the, the keys country. to the locker. You got the keys to the locker. <laughs> the only difference is the technicians are going tonight to Portugal. But... VR is here and Dabiki, we, have some referees. <laughs> we have some referees we have been trained Zakel has been trained Arispani Gomez Dabiki. has been trained uh, Akona has been trained uh, Jelly Chaban is on training as we speak Principal so, yeah. are, are we want to see something you've got the keys are we got the uh, what is nice is some technician <laughs> understand and I also understand a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> VR is here <laughs> 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 it's 21 after the hour 6 I said a little bit earlier on that um 
when you look at the DSTV premiership and not just the log, because as far as the log is concerned, I think there's no even speaking about sundowns. I mean, when we did, we were called the sundowns show for a while because <laughs> rightfully so, they were superb in the league. But when you take a look at all league competitions, when you take the, 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 the top eight, when you take NetBank, when you take the actual league into account, Orlando Pirates, holistically, surely then, get a nod of a sundowns as far as that is concerned but one school of thought will say the premiership is the biggest competition in the league oh yeah and 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 therefore it can't be anything else cannot surpass that if you've won the league seven games to go uh the longest unbeaten run you know you you deserve all the plaudits but i, und- I understand the, the a the trophy in the cabinet correct, in the correct. semi-final of one which they could still win correct and second place finish. I mean, Jose Riviera deserves a lot of credit. Um, you know, and, and I've seen, it's. I, I didn't really want to speak about it, but I've seen on Twitter, I keep getting tagged on a comment that I made on the, when he was appointed in June last year. What was the year. comment? The comment was that you know, we, he's on the back foot because there was a lot of mixed reaction to his appointment. Mm. And my comment, and I, I think I was also in a Twitter space where I said he's on the back foot because we don't know a lot, a lot about him and his, his CV shows that he hadn't worked for a while it doesn't mm. give us a clear picture so now that the coach is doing well everybody is saying he's giving he's serving me humble pie that's not how football works when you give an opinion when some at, at a time something happens events could lead to either a coach being successful or not being successful and i'm happy that the coach is doing well at pirates yeah i mean when a coach does come to south africa what what, what pundits and what uh, journalists do is they go dig up his history of course and then tell us who he is via what he's been able to do 100%. and speaking of coaches and history Rolando Mukwena's history does not include having played football you know he's not like a pizza musimana who i grew up watching he's not like a an arthur Zwane, exactly. uh, and many more that i can mention that we, we we saw play odg we can go on the list is endless and here's here's another coach andile that still to this day to some degree does not get the credit he deserves because everyone thinks because sundowns have the resources then it's a it's by default like you can that they fit should, anyone in you that can fi- you and i can go and coach sundowns and win the league that's not how the game works but the one thing that ranam queen has gone and done now is admitted something very few well something I admit all the time the reason I don't analyze football yet ask questions about it of, because of my curious nature because I can never tell you what it looks like to be by the corner flag with 15 minutes to, with, with a minute to go and you're 2-1 down and yeah. what, you, what do you need to do I can't tell you the emotions of that of that minute Coach Rolando Mukwena bravely and rightfully so mm. had this to say about that one of my biggest disadvantages is not having played professional football. So some of these things I have not lived. Uh, and so I have huge expectations. But from a, from a psychological perspective, I can just imagine how difficult it is. So um, is, I have a reliance on, on, on speaking to the players a lot. I, I, I have to speak. I have to feel. I have to sense where they are and, and, and what they think about the game. So from now on, I'm gonna keep that clip, and we're gonna keep it on rotation here. When somebody says "Maraul Dalangi Paula," we'll throw that in there. We'll throw <laughs> that one. in there. That's uh, Coach yeah. Rolando Mukwena there. Yeah, remember, we are taking your calls on zero six zero double five two seven three zero three, and uh, your WhatsApp zero eight six double zero zero two one six zero. What we are sitting with here at the moment is the weekend that was. So please. Do engage us on anything from the sporting weekend. We've got the referee here who can take a look at any moment that you want to take a look at. Mazola here with the big stories of the weekend. Let's take a break. It's exactly 28 of the R6. Thank you so much for joining us. We call us our Sports Night Amplified with Andy. It's a three not so wise men, not always wise anyway. It's uh, Victor, the referee. We call him the principal, Tlongwane, as well, of course, as Mazola Mulefe. Mazola, get into your stories, making headlines, the big ones. I never like it when coaches get this personal. Yeah, it got personal at Moses Mabida. Obviously, I was there. Our live game was uh, Royal AM Cape Town City, but I then later made my way to um, Amazulu and uh, Skukune. A grudge match for Brendan Trute. And I wasn't surprised really with his response. I think, it, you know, as journalists, we timed it perfectly uh, to, to, to get him to open up. Let me just backtrack a little bit before we play that clip on Brendan Trute. Last week, former media uh, uh, head of communications at Amazulu, U Pumlani Dube, called a press conference where he revealed uh, that uh, from his point of view and what he knows is that there was a drinking culture or there is a drinking culture at Amazulu Football Club, hmm. which obviously was um, the response from Sandile Lezungu was that, you know, the former employee is bitter. But we then put forward to Brendan Trute to say, you were here just a couple of months ago. Is it true? And this is what Brendan Trute had to say. 
Yes, no, 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 it's true. Uh, players came to training drunk, smelling of the alcohol. I had to deal, deal with it at one stage. And, and yeah, so, hmm. yeah, um, that's the whoever said it as well. Uh, I'm not going to lie for anybody, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it, it was also a little bit surprising because uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, we, you know, there was a story about Andile Jali and uh, Sipom Bule at Sundowns, you know, coming to training under the influence and whatever the case may be. You know, Coach Rulani was reluctant to go into detail or mm. even 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 you know throw his players under the bus brendan trute then came to the press conference it was a build-up to a net bank cup asked the same question he said but you can't you have to protect your players because you you need them hence i'm saying out at moses mabida perhaps given the result on the night the coach uh, felt that he had to to hit back in 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 one form or another but at that same time uh, shortly after we spoke to brendan trute Cobra Dlamini then came in. Of course, you would expect that as a current coach of Amazulu, he would have a few words about that as well. Going king and cool and the show on a band, you understand? But my question is not good on good. If you show Mutua Tela, my son, I'm very much a Kumara Bramazulu, you understand? Mutua Tela, and as it shows the good, and she am in a long one, I could go and I mean, I'm not part of that. Basho was saying, it comes from me, not from the team. You must be my words, dog. It's not coming from the president, it's not coming from anyone. These people that are saying these things are very, very bitter. Hmm. Besides, Talking about people that are saying those things being bitter in talking about Brendan Trute as well as Pumlani Dube, uh, Coach Cobra also felt the need uh, to shield his players. Ma. This thing that is being said can destroy their careers. Some people might look and say, I will never hire a player from Amazon again. There are still youngsters here at Amazon that need a future. They need to go somewhere, overseas and everything, go to the national team. If people are saying that, what does it do to them, to their image? You know, If you, are, if you have a problem with the team, you have to address it in a way that is respectful. But if you go out and say people at Amazon are trying to do then maybe be star now is Katusada. Hi, Bo. For those, because uh, there's a lot of people driving from Polokwane, but we're getting calls and we're getting texts saying, hey, we're with you on the road. So, because I was like, I'm going to go to the road. 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 Yeah, but you know, uh, but one, but one, no, this guy boa go moy. Eh, I boy go high. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. a very bad translation there, but nonetheless. <laughs> uh, and it's it's one of those things though where you say if you don't call players out and it's a culture within it, and if you you're not uh, uh, facing off with them, are you helping them? Absolutely. I mean, this is, I mean, it was a longer conversation, obviously now because of, you know, time, we're mm. not playing the full conversation. I mean, that press conference with uh, Coach Ayanda Cobra was about 20 minutes long, uh, where he, you know, among other things, he talks about his future at the club. But, you know, we spent quite a bit of time uh, talking about this issue of this drinking culture at, at, at Amazulu. A lot of players in the past, we know that have been let go, uh, whether it's Amazulu or any other club in the premiership. But, you know, there is there is a theme, a common theme among top flight clubs or even lower division clubs to to shield players uh, from this type of situation. And you 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 you, you got to hear two different uh, sides of it from a uh, from an ex coach and ex employee who says no, I can't protect them, and another coach who's currently in the hot seat at the moment saying no, I have to shield them because I need them. They need mm. to play for me in the very next uh, uh, three remaining games in, in in the top flight at the moment. Hmm. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, if you are an Amazulu fan, um, you know what do you make of what's been said, of what's been happening at Amazulu as far as the drinking culture is concerned? He was here, Brandon Tritter. He didn't want to say much about the team. And uh, obviously something changed between the last time he was here when he was now there. The emotions of the match could have gotten course, to him. Yeah. you know. But uh, he, he did make mention of the fact that he didn't at some point run or rule the roost as far as uh, the change room is concerned. And that, you know, there was concerning things that came from players within there. Uh, something that uh, Sandy Lezungu on the show even has said that is grossly misinterpreted and is, is, is made to be bigger than what actually it is. But results always show you know uh, as time goes the culture always comes out yeah one of the things he said uh brandon trute in that presser as well is that in that dressing room at amazulu it, it got quite heated during his seven month uh stint there and he also mentioned that it's a good squad quality squad that can make top four challenge for the league title but in his own words he said they are rotten individuals in that squad Wow, let's move on. Sundowns, what's going on? Sundowns, a big story coming out of Chlorkop. They are head of uh, academy and methodology. Sean Bishop is off to Europe. And he's got a 
opportunity there he, he didn't reveal what it is at the moment he says he'll leave it up to the club to make the announcement but he's been at sundowns give or take why via to go or he's going for sundowns related stuff no Wahoot. he's leaving the oh, club okay. his last day is on the 30th of june at the end of uh, officially at the end of the season he's off to, to to europe just last year he was rubbing shoulders with andre villas boas uh, carlos curos and and jose Mourinho. he completed his masters at the university of lisbon in in portugal so he says now spoke to him earlier this morning he's got an opportunity and he expanded a little bit on it no it's nothing surreptitious or mm. uh actually the the board of sundowns and, and dr Motsepe and the chairman and everything have been involved in the process it's just an opportunity um overseas that that i felt i couldn't turn down i mean uh, from sundowns there, there's no other club in africa you can go to no other club in Africa you can go to. A lot of people had uh, a few things to say about that. <laughs> and luckily, I'm like, yeah? <laughs> what? And what are then, you saying? You know, so, you know, uh, Sean Bishop inherited the, the academy, as it were, from the Johan Crave Foundation around 2015-2016 uh, season. Mm. You know, he's the brains behind the, the academy at the moment. Some of the players that you see uh, coming from the youth academy playing, making their debuts, come from Sean's hands along with the, the guys that work with him in the in the development, like your surprise Moriri and coach David Notwani. Uh, big loss to Sundowns, but you know Sundowns will bounce back. They will be able to to, to fill that, that spot. And Sean is probably going to open more doors for our players. Uh, that's as a, as a connect we had a conversation thanks so much for that one we had a conversation over the weekend uh, and I had it with Simpure uh, Lulu um, as well as Coach Mkanta when I asked about Mayo I said here's a player very quietly doing what he's doing at Cape Town City even when you look at their struggles and you look at how many goals he scored and the opportunities had would he do better at a bigger club just a conversation mm. you know or is he fine where he is where he can get proper game time and development without the pressure of the so called big clubs seemingly Cape Town City are thinking the same thing I'm thinking because they said hey let's secure this they you can look at it two ways Andile uh, you know the one way is to say they are holding on to him because he's a big player 24 years old he can play there for the next couple of years and still keep banging in the goals if he coach Tinkler says if he scores more goals then he could get an opportunity to go to Europe or you could look at he's it 24, with, so he's 24 so Europe is still a thing yeah it's still a thing or you could look at it as uh, John Comites uh, being the chairman that he is and securing so that Mayo doesn't leave for free. Remember, his mm. option has been exercised to keep him until 2025. And if he if he were to leave for free, they would make no money. But now, with this arrangement now, any potential suitor has to uh, to pay the big bucks to to get Mayo. I did manage to speak to Eric Tinkler in Durban after their game against Golden Arrows about uh, Kanisa Mayo. Got to help himself. You know, the fact of the matter is, you know, the opportunities since the beginning of the season, we've created plenty. So if I have to be brutally honest, Mayo shouldn't be on 10. Mayo should be on a lot more. You know, now it's turning those opportunities that are created into into goals. You mm -hmm. know, and, you know, our, our strikers need to understand that, you know, you watch leagues around the world. 10 goals is not really a hell of a lot for, for strikers, you know. That's true, though. Yeah, true. that is true. Uh, he makes an example, Collins Mbesuma, when he was a Chiefs, only 21 years old, he scored 35 goals immediately. He was sold to Portsmouth in the English Premier League. So Mayo, yes, still 24. There's an opportunity. You know, let's see what happens. But there, there is strong interest, obviously, locally as well. And one of them being mentioned reportedly is, is, is without a doubt, Sundowns. Perhaps really? The perhaps the only team that can pay the... Uh, the but would the, they need a, a Maya, you think, in that team? I personally, I don't think they they need Mayo in the team. I don't know why Mayo would go to Sundowns with the likelihood that maybe he you know he would be a sporadic player or he might not get a lot of game time because there's Keshas Malula there. I don't think Peter Shalulila is going anywhere anytime soon. Soon there's a uh, Abubaka Nasir as well. They've they they've got a lot of players. Yeah, but then in, again, in, in my position. mind, as you say that, I think of Shalulila and how long he was out for uh, Abubaka, how long he was out Correct. for, and during that time. Uh, Mailula was taking a lot of that strain and playing as a lot of maybe then if you're going to be looking at it like that and considering the amount of games that Sundowns get to play um, in any other season they play more games than any other team in the DSTV Premiership but it would be nice to see uh, and this is dreamer me now speaking the two Mayo brothers playing together man Oof. 
Hey, I'd love to see that. Uh, wherever it is that they're going, I'd love to see what it would look like for the two of them to play together. It's exactly um, 1839, taking your calls at 45, of course, as per usual. But when we come back, we go straight to the principal. There is one other big story, but you're saving it for later. Why would it so? We're saving it for later. Catch us on Soccer Zone where we will dissect it even more. But uh, Black Leopards and TTM have been relegated and, you know, talk within the fraternity about that All-Stars FC uh, status that's available. Could they? Will they? Let's see. He's here, the principal. Let's step into his office. Principal? Uh, thank you, my Ari Perile. Eh, uh, you Arvon, see, you weekend. See, you see, I refereed Patrick Mayo and I refereed Kaniso Mayo. Yeah. I refereed uh, Aid, uh, uh, McCarthy, Fabian, uh. and I refereed Aiden McCarthy, which yeah, is his no. son. Hi, now I said, no, no, let me call it a day. Bozwane, I was fourth Eugene? official for his father. Now I refereed the, the son. So all we need now is your son to referee. He's in the ABC Motsepe League. I'm per second referee and I got to say, Lena Fana got the penalty. No, he's an assistant. What's how can I pack out? Really? Yeah, Marabamu Kenya, but no Kenya. Tatua how was good on the inside. So, yeah, he's getting there. He's getting there. Wow. And then, on the advantage, because for dinner today, what about Zalaga VAR? For presumption of VAR. He's ready. He's hey, ready. Tamil kilo wana matamal toras kiasa region na mukindi. Toras kiasa biye armo country. What did you see this weekend? What's going on? Uh, this weekend, let's go to Chiefs and uh, Chipa. Mm. Uh, Chipa scored the goal in the last minute. Mm. Uh, what does the law says? There was a push on the keeper. Uh, the law says a goal is scored when the whole of the ball passes over the goal line between the two upright posts beneath or under the crossbar, mm. unless an offense has been committed by the team scoring the goal. So someone pushed the keeper. So an offense has been committed. That was that's why the goal was disallowed. So we'll digest it nicely to see if the keeper has his hand on the ball. Then an offense has been committed. That's number one. Let's go to number two. Number two, we saw uh, Maduna getting a red card. Mm. Uh, uh, when the ball is out of play, we don't expect you to kick or to push somebody. If you do that, it's violent conduct because the ball is out of play. You must behave in a responsible manner. So the referee gave Maduna a red card. And uh, Maduna went to, uh, what is this guy who came from uh, outside, who's playing for Skukun in the middle? You had him on the, on the show? <laughs> came from outside? <laughs> yes, uh, he, he, from under 12, he's old. Uh, Kamuhel. He, he pushed Kamuhel in an unsporting manner. So when the ball is out of play, uh, it's violent conduct by law. So a player should be sent off. So he received his matching orders uh, <laughs> just okay. like that. I want to know about the Chiefs one. Chiefs swallows just now. Yes. We, we saw the uh, Keegan Allen having to get into an ambulance to leave the field. Yeah, ma, uh, uh, FIFA has issued an instruction that anything that goes to the face uh, should be sanctioned accordingly. So the hand went to the face. Now the referee is to assess whether it's reckless or excessive force. So uh, I did not see the final part because I had to quickly drive here, but mm. I saw the player when he was, uh, you know, surrounded by the players. So now, as to whether it was reckless or careless, but the cut definitely should come out because the hand went to the face. So the referee has oh. to assess if it was excessive force use or it was just a uh, reckless where the player uh, never showed consideration for his action. On that principle, yes. I don't know if you, you 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 saw it in the English Premier League yesterday. Um, you know. Diego Jota mm. kicking uh, uh, skip the in the face and then the VAR not changing the decision to a red card offense. I, I, I don't understand how that works. Uh, you know, I was in a calf assignment, not calf, calf. <laughs> so I no, I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah. not, I'm not speaking about that particular incident. Yeah. You know, I'm not isolated. I'm just saying something similar. Similar, so you're talking yes. about the rules, uh, determining whether it's reckless. I mean, he's kicked the guy in the face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, or he's, you know, they're jumping for the ball or he el elbows him without the intent to to, 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 to to endanger him. But he, you know, there's a cut on the face or, you know, I mean, for instance, Bongani Zungu a couple of weeks ago, yes. that Golden Arrows game yeah. where he gets a cut, almost like his eye was almost taken off. But yeah. the player stays on the pitch. But the guy had to go to hospital to get stitches. Yeah, that is called dangerous play. So dangerous play, normally the ref will consider if the ball was there. What's or then the difference between dangerous play and malicious intent? Uh, dangerous play is the player is trying to play the ball. Okay. But uh, in the process of so playing no the ball, meaning there's no it. meaning, yes. Okay. So his there's aim no was to play the ball, to yes. So then malicious is when you play the man. 
you go straight to the men. That's what we call brutality. So, how do you rate, so where do you rate that Chiefs one? Uh, it's in between. Who's the uh, player? Keegan uh, Allen. So, uh, Keegan. No, Keegan Allen was a Swallows player. Who Solomon. Was Solomon. Marta, so, yeah, Solomon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Solomon. Yeah. yeah, when I look at it, there was contact in the face. But I didn't see excessive force. So, at least a yellow should have come out for that. Right, so what if do you nothing came later out, on Soccer Zone? Yeah, we'll check it. Because I want to know, I want to know that, that that Sundown's offside. Um, I think it was given. I am assuming was given as offside. That Peter Sharilile, you know, he he chest traps the ball in the box. He's kicked in the stomach, and that goal wasn't given. Are you going to give it on Soccer Zone? You'll give us that one. Yes, I was there because I did not see yeah. the lines being drawn, uh-huh. and that's why I'm like, I want to know. If it, I didn't see the lines being drawn for offside. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I've learned with the VR that I was working with on the weekend is mm. VR has got its own uh, machine and playing their own slow motion. So, so uh, we don't always see what you guys are doing. The footage that you guys see that we don't see. Is that what you're saying? You might not have seen, but they have to sell it to the public. The broadcaster has to sell it. But VR have established that Shalulil was offside before the ball was kicked to him. So when the kick happened, was a yeah, second. Yeah, there are a lot of ones. Yeah, the broadcasters should have shown that and sell the decision too, so that you can be convinced. Okay, what's the boss? It's okay. <laughs> it's 651. Let's take a break. When we come back, it's all over. Uh, for us, it's up to you now. 086 000 2160. And on WhatsApp, it's 060 552 It's the weekend that was. 060 552 Good evening, Mr. Ma. Ah, this is Mr. Explorer. As a ghost fan, we outclassed, demolished the first, and uh, congratulations to Swallows F. Good evening, Ma'a. It's here, sorry too. Hey, I dislike you, man. Who fagi Arsenal party? From the wet go, you said this, this, and that. Although what you said was the truth. I'm so disappointed by the kind of keeping me happy. <laughs> Thank you. Askis. Askis. <laughs> hola, hola, Shapuze, Andile. Hey, Andile, Wona, Anza. Hey, Joe, what a weekend it was, bro, mm. plan me. Uh, give one instant down, sit like game, Monati. Uh, I didn't expect it like that. They have one sorry, Kefi Gary, not this year. And then, Giratile, game, yeah, Pirates, Happy Happy Boswaga. And Chiefs Galaxy. Yo, attendance at Pirates, it was massive. Mm. Yeah, one sort next season, uh, all these big three teams, Kaza, Kaza Chiefs, Pirates and Downs, will compete. The defense, called Defender Chiefs, City Asaka this time. But it was good games, all of them, Andile. Good show, Andile. My Nyanya, Pichoda, CBD. Oh, my Nyanya, let's play one more. Ah, yes, one of Shah. Andile, Kaza Chiefs are not going to the Champions League. Finish and clap. Pirates fans. They will not go to Clearly. the Champions League. They will not even go to to to. Oh, to I heard the Chiefs fan. Federation Cup. Arthur Zwani is inexperienced. The team, the management, they are not serious. Hmm. I am a Kansas Chiefs fan, but I will be changing to my memory. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of this. Right. I heard Kansas Chiefs fan. Ah, you can't change, Chief. Yeah, you are what you are. <laughs> you stick with them, Chief. You can't change. Let's take some calls now. Uh, first up is uh, Lunga in Rua Report. Yeah? Lunga out in Rua Report on the weekend that was. Lunga? Uh, a weekend that was uh, Andile. Andy hey, Chief. welcome, man. Welcome. Uh, good good evening. Uh, but first, to, first and foremost, uh, I wish another uh, Tola it 80 minutes in a place with 14. Uh, Avala Lady Bay Metro, Monday yes, and right Friday. To, 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 to engage, to engage, I'm not the second. Yeah, I'm Monday and Friday, and I'm here, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I want to so shy 80 seconds, you mind. It's actually extra time. Talk yeah, to no, me. Uh, no, look, uh, I want to talk about uh, Peter and um, the coach of uh, Amazulu. Mm. Buffet, too. Uh, you know, uh, there's a pool, there's a there's a pool of players in the PSL. You know we can't be talking about things as a pool that my trainings and all that. Singa banga skill with You know, like, yeah. First and foremost, you know, even the management in the stage was the two, three, or like formal informal 
but you want to internal but then to the issue of the law of it people like nabuma post cuts here but i want to tell you that i know we're saying training is to abu bani but but but, but Luma, let me to, ask you this let me ask so. you this what what if uh, and this is the devil's advocate in me and i don't think that you know the entertainment sector should be ever uh, weighed up against uh, every other job everyday jobs because yeah. you know it doesn't need the same from society but then yeah. somebody might turn around and say these are internal politics within a team why would we embarrass people in that manner at their job because this is work for them why would we embarrass and say in public is in public is shouldn't this be something that the team deals with within themselves if you have a you know like very very like it's kind of like disturbing bro because it, it comes back and forth and there was uh, there was this case that i know personally whereby he out he loses funny because he had an affair the mistress he had the boss of one of the teams L- let me know? ask you this then let me ask you this then who is sure. that person yeah, one exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Never there you go. There you go. There you go, Lunga. You can't even say names, but you're expecting names. Ah, uh, hey, no, Ning Tolide. <laughs> <laughs> Lunga, Rudy boy, thank you very much. He's out here. Let's go to David out there, Guru Lenny. David. Uh, the weekend that was. Hey, it's the weekend that was, my brother. Talk to us. Thank you, thank you, Ma. Uh, let me just uh, summarize by saying, you know, um, there is this uh, tendency of South African uh, by, um, uh, coaching staff and players to demonize uh, the names of the teams once they are out of uh, contract with them. Hmm. I want to mention an example. Tikom Dice will lambast Pirates uh, negatively. You understand? Hmm. Okay, and then uh, I, I raise that one. I, 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 I come to the VAR issue. Hmm. South Africa he has proven, look, the Sundowns in Marumo doing wonders mm-hmm. in CAF. It's a leading league. This is a brand that should be having a VAR in place by now. But mm-hmm. thank you to the failure of SAFA. And uh, thirdly, I want to say, yes, uh, today's uh, 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 unfortunate uh, injury to a solo player was not supposed to be happening uh, in this session. Um, the referees, the, I, I once uh, s- said to you previously that, you know, being unfair is not only to say Chief is getting penalties. Uh, unfair application of the law when it benefits a team also hmm. uh, 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 amounts to unfairness. Okay. I hear you, David. Uh, firstly, kudos to yeah. the referee. Who was the referee in that game? The Chiefs game, Solos? Cedric no? Mouvali. Cedric Mouvali. Yeah, he was, he was brilliant in that. But, David, I want to take you to your first point. What is the yeah. difference between a player lambasting a team and a player speaking about his experiences at the team that actually happened? What is, where do you draw the line there? Because I, 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 I don't know what Dicko said. I, I don't have insight on it. But what if Dicko was just telling his story about things happening that Which while he, he was in there? His, in his book as well. Yeah. Is, is that still lambasting yeah. if I'm just telling you, good day? The best thing, uh, I would prefer somebody to be brave enough and say it while he's still there. But I'm going to get fired. They mustn't wait for them to be out of the, the, the club and then say something negative. But you'll right. be victimized when you're there. No, I hear you, David. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that one. Let's go Thank to Yanga. Yanga's out in Cape Town. Yanga, it's the weekend that was. I've got uh, the oh, not always so wise gentleman with me. <laughs> yeah, my, the weekend that was. <laughs> talk to me. Sure, Yanga. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to talk about um, APN. I mean, Arsenal fan, but I can say <laughs> when I'm a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, now you know, Mapagania came to our rescue. You know, um, on Sunday, what a, a, a beautiful game! You know, the spectators, um, they wonderful. Now, I'm still saying to the management, um, give this guy um a long term contract because mm. you can see the vision, you know, as, as supporters. So, um, I don't know long term what is to them, but to me, it's five years going up. I remember you laughed at me when I was saying that, and you're still saying the, the, the other day. Yeah, and um, again, this will do us a favor, you know, and offload, you know, some, some players um, for the next season, more especially in the striking uh, department, you know. Um, Who must be offloaded? Uh, let me not mention the names at this time, but See, um, there you I go. Have-